Okay, Rupert, David Letterman hasn't been on CBS for years, yet his merchandise is still killing it. The only place that you can get official Letterman, Late Show with David Letterman merchandise is right here at the Hello Deli. How do people get this merchandise other than coming in here? Obviously, you want to come in here. If you're in New York, right. come to the Ed Sullivan Theater, come to uh, the Hello Deli, get yourself a Paul Schaefer sandwich uh, or something else, and then buy some merchandise. If people can't make it to New York, what's the best way to get some of this merchandise. Well, they can get on my website, um, hello-deli.com, yep. and order it there. Now, do you pack that yourself? Do you pack it, uh, this merchandise, and send it off to people yourself? I, I do. Okay, yep. if um, if people ask you to add onions to the order, will you add onions to the order? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That sounds great. Uh, the Hello Deli is the sponsor of the Letterman Podcast. We are so grateful for that, Rupert. We're so grateful for you. And my pleasure. on a personal note, thank you for the years and years and years of entertainment that you have brought not just America, Thank I'm Canadian, you. but brought the world. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure. Thank you for watching. Absolutely. La, 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 la. Welcome once again to the Letterman Podcast. My name is Mike Chisholm. Uh, I'm not going to give you very much of an intro this week because we are just continuing the conversation uh, that we started with Jeff Martin last week. Um Man, if there is a time to go into the weeds uh, about uh, Late Night with David Letterman, um, the person that I want to do it with is Jeff Martin, among others. I mean, my gosh, uh, but 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 you think about um, what Jeff brought to the table for these episodes, and he talks about it a little bit in, in part two here where, I mean, he was loaded for bear, and we, uh, we're going to start with the last few seconds of uh, of the last episode where it where it left off and then just kind of go from there with an even longer episode we actually went uh double the time after he kind of made that hey can i can i just start riffing and and, and going yeah we yes please do Jeff. <laughs> and another hour and 40 some odd minutes um and and here's the cool part about this episode uh don giller is a big part of it and this is the stuff that i love so so much um uh, clearly, I bring uh, enthusiasm and, and 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 energy and all this stuff that um, if I if I have any skills whatsoever, I probably just listen to them actually. Uh, I, but Don has this knowledge that is so rich and deep. And every time he comes in and starts asking these questions, like when he brought up the talking dog reference and and some of these other references that 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 he talked about, uh, great moment. I just love having Don. Um, and, and, and his insights and, and the facts and stuff are great that he feeds uh, the shows and, and, and we're having fun with that. But when he actually pops on and starts asking questions uh, of the guest, I think that's a really special thing uh, for all of us enthusiasts of David Letterman to see that, to see Don interacting with some of these legends and, and, and using his point of view. Um, and obviously it, it, it makes our show significantly better um having having his mind involved in it and uh and his curiosities as well uh so there, there's a lot of that in this episode more than we've ever had um and just talks about all sorts of stuff letterman of course uh some more conan stuff norm we talk about norm mcdonald uh we talk about his involvement with craig ferguson um and uh and of course you know lots and lots and lots and lots of of of, of letterman stuff um, and one of my favorite parts is him talking about how he met his wife and the story behind that. Very cool story. Um, we even get a little sentimental at the end. I just uh, appreciate that Jeff allowed us to go down that path a little bit and and was uh, way open and vulnerable. Uh, lots of good stuff with uh, the Letterman podcast, Jeff Martin, part two. Thank you very much for everybody out there who is trying to uh, to help us be better. We appreciate that. And uh, enjoy the Letterman podcast, Jeff Martin, part two. And <laughs> and uh, can I can I just flit around and because these names came up, please. Like uh, this is this is heaven. This is a beautiful, beautiful show. Well, uh, you know, this is exactly I, what we want. I, I think if I'm ever going to do it, this would appear to be the place. Outstanding. Anytime you like, sir, by the way, standing invitation to come back whenever you want. So yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sure you release the debris. Oh, okay. This is the place. Well, well, it, 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 since you invited me, I did, you know, sort of thought about it all weekend. So I need to do this so I can think about something else. <laughs> That's good. I am, I am, we are happy to be the receptacle. But just, uh, of, uh, of uh, just everything, everything I heard uh, talking to the, the old guys who were there when I was there. Yeah. 
you know, I just remember it all so clearly, of course. And let's see. Oh, well, the, uh, you talked to Kathleen Ankers, who would yeah. build the props. Um, I, my, and the uh, set. The favorite, set as well. Emmy award-winning set. The whole nine yards. She is great. Uh, she, yeah. She was she was very elegant, uh, little older British lady. And, yep. and uh, uh, she, uh, I had a bit we would do occasionally. Dave's Wheel of Fun. And it would have... Uh, uh, He'd spin it and, you know, all right, what, you know, he'd, different bits. And supposedly he'd go like, you know, who will chance reward? <laughs> just one of those nice little turns. That's a great turn of phrase. Who yeah, the, 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 the show would just, you know, the, the, toss out of its back pocket the, that I always, you know, loved before I worked there. Anyway, and, and there was obviously a stagehand working behind, you know, would stop it at the predetermined place, you know. Yep. But uh, so we, but we had to think of, okay, what are different fillers? And I thought of one that was just, uh, you know, okay, one Liverville theater. And the idea was just a, a little puppet theater with uh, pieces of liver on sticks. <laughs> you know, and they're just bouncing back and forth. And, you know, the, and, and it, it didn't come up on the wheel. So, <laughs> uh, so it only, you know, we only saw it for like three seconds. <laughs> So it, it, it was it was what it was intended to be, just just an oddball yep. film. But then Kathleen uh, built it. She she had to stiffen the liver, you know, <laughs> as one does. Yeah, yeah, and uh, as they say, and 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 <laughs> and she had little costumes. And just even in passing, I noticed one of them had on a cowboy hat and a sheriff's badge. <laughs> and I just and I just thought that you know. I wish I'd, I'd gone and grabbed it and saved it because I just thought that is that is the most wonderful thing uh, I've, I've ever seen. You know, I just I I uh, my my love for Kathleen anchors uh, grew even you, greater at, at at that moment. So yeah, uh, what a what a what a and you know, uh, but you would just have good luck with people who turned out to be per good performers. Uh, uh, I I I had great luck with Anton Fig. Yeah, there's you a know, good. Uh, uh, if you go onto Don Giller's channel, I believe there's a there's a great thing with the exchange with you guys. Um, you were you were doing an interview at the desk with Dave yeah. as as a. That was a bit. Of, that was that was that was a bit I wrote. That, that went well. There was just the idea was the uh, carpool book. Is that what it was? He, hmm? The carpool Dave book. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'd written. You know, I'd written a book about the the conceit was I'd written a book about carpool something yeah. like that. And uh, I was I was just a guest, but but the gag was Dave would ask me questions and Anton would answer them. <laughs> and Dave would say, you know, well, I was actually addressing our guest. Yeah, but you're you're looking right at me, too, when you do it. You know, it, it, it's on it's on the Letterman channel. And uh, oh, that one is. Yeah, that that one might be on your that one might be on yours. It, it uh, is. Yeah, that, on your that is on OK, mind. yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one I'd love to see. Another one I did. Another one uh, that was uh, one, one that I, I remember fondly. That was uh, let's see. I, there'd been something, uh, an item in a newspaper that Maury Amsterdam collects, who plays the cello, collects cello-related statuettes. <laughs> that was the article, and I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, and you know, and the the way the piece evolved was, you know, and I thought this is interesting. I wondered if uh, people on our staff had hobbies. Paul, do you have one? He goes, yes, uh, Dave. In fact, uh, as you might expect, I collect piano-related statuettes. It, it sort of builds slowly, you know, and he's just got, <laughs> oh, got hundreds of these things, you know. And uh, he says, Biff, how about you? And Biff says, yeah, Dave, I, uh, I collect little statuettes of Maury Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> he's got them. You know, you got a favorite? This one of them playing the cello. I think this one of them playing the cello. I mean, <laughs> Not as many as Paul, but I'm getting there. And, uh, <laughs> and this was an ad, uh, an ad lib from Biff, God bless him, which was uh, Dave said. So uh, you you uh, you like this hobby? You enjoy it? And Biff says, couldn't think of anything better to do. <laughs> <laughs> which which got a reaction from Dave. And then all right, well I think we got time for one more. What about you, Anton? And Anton goes, well, this is really a coincidence. I collect <laughs> articles about Maury Amsterdam's collection of cello related, related statuettes. <laughs> you know, he shows Dave a few, you know, here's the one you just read. Dave, wow, you're really on the ball. You know, <laughs> I try to be. And here's an, you know, he has a couple more. He goes, How many do you have? How many do you have total? And Anton says, 
three. <laughs> but, but this uh, this takes up all my free time, surprisingly. <laughs> anyway, it, it it was well performed. It went well. And uh, a nice memory also is uh, David rehearsal. Yeah. Uh, getting a good response from the crew. And he kind of just said, pretty cute to himself. And and afterwards, very, he only he didn't do this five times, but he, he called me into the office and uh, and said, so uh, how'd you think that went? <laughs> and of course, I'm thinking, I thought it killed, <laughs> you know, yeah, well, that went great. Fun. But, uh, you know, I just and you just realize, OK, good. That's that's his uh, that's his way of saying uh, great job. Good job. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a nice pat on the back. Let me, uh, boy, if I could, one more. Uh, I got the gardener going outside. Are we okay? I'm fine. Okay. Oh, the, yeah. the, um, uh, one more, another bit so I remember freely. I, I didn't, I, I did my share on like the repeatables, you know, new gift items. Refillable, for, yeah, I, I was going to ask you about you know, I, 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 would, I would, I would, I would. You know, I generally get a couple on, you know, on, on a lot of those segments. I didn't create that many re long repeatable bits, you know, uh, that, that I, I didn't, I wasn't as good at that as, as uh, people like Meryl Marco or Steve O'Donnell, you know, Steve would bring in the big man and it's like, oh yeah, that's great. You know, things we we easily do a half dozen times, but uh, I have some fond memories of, of like some one shot wraparound episodes. Yeah, uh, I did. We did. Do you, do you remember any of the letter home ones? It would be where the the show would be framed by a member of the staff. We did one with Dave, one with Paul Schaefer, and one with Anton. This rings a bell, but I haven't seen it in a going long time. Going in and time. out of commercials. Yeah, you would, you, would uh, you know at the start of the show, into the show, going in and out of commercials. You know, they just they'd be writing, and you'd hear the voiceover. And what it was was uh, a gimmick directly uh, inspired by Mash episodes. In those days, they, those those would like win the Emmy. <clears throat> Hawkeye and, Pierce would start the episode writing a letter to yeah. his dad. The episode would then go through the past week or whatever, and he'd finish the episode or letter and mail it off to his dad. Yeah, yeah, just that, just that. Yeah. So we we would do those, and those were fun to do, and they went well. And a uh, couple a couple of moments I remember, uh, there were really one was uh, halfway through the show. Of Paul Schaefer's, you come back from commercial, and he's saying, you know, so mom and dad, you know, a funny thing happened during the break. <laughs> One of the NBC pages, Kimberly, you know, accidentally dropped her pencil. It wasn't a big deal, but Dave went crazy, you know, started screaming at her, got ready, you know, like a crazy man, you know, and she, she went away in tears. And when the cameras went back on, Dave acted as if nothing had happened. <laughs> and you go back to the show and, you Perfect. know, Dave, Dave, you know, you know, hey, welcome back, you know, and the audience is laughing. <laughs> You know, good to see, you know, it, that played very well. Uh, <clears throat> Anton, uh, another one Anton did. And um, at the end of the episode, he goes like, then, you know, Dave said uh, good night and another show is in the books. It's amazing the way these skilled professionals can time things out. So each show ends precisely, you know, on time. Yeah. Well, hey, you're, you're loving son. Anton puts down the pencil, a couple of seconds pass, and then he slowly looks over and notices the camera's still on. <laughs> and the audience was in on, you know, the audience yeah. laughs. And, uh, and uh, uh, I remember and I remember hearing Paul Schaefer, you know, ah, ah, you know, laughing along with it. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm insulting Paul every time I do it. That's the best I can. I don't do. think so. No, okay. I, think, I think that's how you do Paul right there. Paul, Paul, Paul. Uh, you know, just another guy with a very uh, sharp sense of humor that you wanted. You know, you wanted to make him laugh. You know, like Dave. And anyway, so I mean, and then Anton goes back. You know, you know, like I say, it's amazing the way these skill professionals and hard cut off. You know, and and. Uh, <laughs> You know, nice to get a good laugh. Nice to end the show with a good laugh. But but also just you know, Anton, a drummer. Yeah. You know, uh, not a not, no claims to being a performer. You know, just just had perfect comic timing. You know, 
Well, was, 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 a lot of you all, a lot of you had that, and it was um you used awkwardness, and I mean I think about awkwardness and how later on, you know, 15, 20 years later, awkwardness would be one of the the hallmarks of a successful show where they would you know the you know the office and things like that where they would make people feel that way. I think you guys were way ahead of the curve when it came to that as well. By the way, Paul's letter was five twenty seven eighty six. Dave was three eighteen eighty seven, and Anton's was twelve fifteen eighty seven. So, um, right, we'll clear that up. Yeah, there you go. So refillables, you uh the actor singer. I love I love the <laughs> the actor singer stuff. Now, this is sort of a refillable. It was something that went over, you know, uh multiple weeks. Um anyway, was this something that the other writers wrote for you or did you write this um and 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 get yourself in it? Uh, was it a combination? Like I asked that of, I, I think I, I asked that of boy, Jerry I, as well. Like, oh, geez, I, I sure hope I'm not taking credit for something I, I didn't write. I, well, I think Joe Toplin was the first actor singer, but then I did it a few more times. Yeah, and yeah. It where you know, let's. So I think that was the first time where you know the phrase actor singer, and then <laughs> the second time was the one where I was I was asked to do it. Now, uh, let me ask you. There, there was an odd. There was I think a New York magazine piece on the Letterman, just a puff piece on the Letterman writing staff. Yeah. And uh, they described me in that piece as the ultimate Letterman clone. And I, I don't know what they mean by that. <laughs> we have the same physique? I don't know. Well, you're both good at softball. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 well, okay, so you're okay. So there's a couple of questions here about the process that 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 mm -hmm. uh, that I can ask based on this. Um, Number one is 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 the idea of did you ever write things for other writers? Um, you know, sometimes people have pieces that they have in mind. We had Joe Grossman on from Late Show uh, not too long ago, and I mean, he made I forget how many appearances, but uh, like a hundred appearances. Um, but other writers were having fun, poking fun, getting him on the show. Were there people on the cast? Uh, or in the crew um, that you were like, oh, I want to, I want to get you on. I want to write something for you because it's really funny you know, when you're oh, on. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh uh, yeah. Well, just in general, you like yeah. getting people on there. You know, I, 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 I certain, uh, uh, yeah, I, I liked that spirit of the show. So, um, you know, something you could, though. After a while, you sort of think like, hey, you know, you, this works every time. Right. And uh, I think we, on the other hand, though, I remember uh, we tried to sort of push Al Frisch on the show, who is a stagehand, who uh, we thought, hey, it'll just be like Larry Bud Melman. We'll, we'll take a guy who, who doesn't seem at all like a, a celebrity and we'll act like he is a celebrity and it'll, it'll work. And, and uh, I, I, I didn't uh, I don't think the audience is ever quite warm to him. You know, you never know. Yeah. Um, I I didn't write that much for Chris Elliott. Boy, I wrote like uh, you know he sort of had his his little gang and and you know they 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 did great stuff. And boy, I, I wrote something for him once, uh, like the Incredible Shrinking Guy, which was an idea I liked. Where he he you know he comes out, it's his it's his, you know like a movie or something like that. You know yep. he's, he's plugging and he he fights a rat, which was Sandy Frank in a, a rat outfit, and then kind of like have a fist fight, and the rat has like a giant pencil and or no, Chris tries to hit him with a giant pencil and he takes it and breaks it over his knee, <laughs> and then Chris eventually defeats him by hitting him with an ordinary sized uh uh uh. Uh, beer bottle, you know, sure. <laughs> like yeah. that. And they come out of it, and Chris is, you know, accepting the applause. And you know, Dave asks him, "Now, shouldn't it have, shouldn't it have been a giant beer bottle too?" <laughs> you know, Dave picks holes, <laughs> and, and Chris gets upset. Yeah, you see, you know, I, I thought it would get those kind of laughs, but uh, for for whatever reason, uh, it, it it got milder laughs than that. And you know, and uh, I, I, you you feel bad. You feel bad to send somebody out. Uh, you know, and, and not have him kill. I'll well, I except with that yeah. show, yeah, it's okay. sometimes you almost want it. Like, like that's the you know mm. Dave's observation again. The thing about Johnny, Johnny would be you know Art Fern, or Johnny would be in the sketch, be in the character, or whatever. Dave was the commentator on the sketch. Well, um, tell, and, yeah, and that was yeah. gold. Let me, let me tell you though, Jim, when I, I thought it was fascinating on Jim Downey's on his appearances on the Letterman Channel, he showed two different pieces. That just just played the tumbleweeds. Yeah, yeah. There was one. I, there was one I remember watching uh, before I, my time. In the show, you know, they'd done something where he and Steve O'Donnell dressed up as pirates, 
And you remember, and the first time they did it, it was very funny. You know, hey, bring back the pirates. And the second time they did it, uh, uh, yeah, I guess they had somebody blindfolded and down he said, and, and you know, we realized do not have a person, a real person blindfolded. It will kill the comedy, you know. <laughs> uh, and, and at any rate, I remember watching it uh, just, you know, when I'm 22, you know, just sure. uh, in the middle of the night and and thinking like, Oh boy. Well, you know, even, even the greats, uh, you never, you know, you never know, even the greats totally whiff with one. And yep. I thought it was kind of remarkable that, uh, Downey is justifiably so, uh, secure, you know, in his comedic judgment that he would trot out, uh, pieces. A sacrificial lamb almost. He, he would trot out that. And another yep. one uh, he wrote where he and Andy Brickman, like they cut to them shaking hands. <laughs> It, you know, as one more joke, got nothing <laughs> in a piece. And at this stage of his career, I guess he was he was just he was more interested uh, in, in something that why something failed and, you know, why why the thousand thing he really didn't succeeded. So but again, that's part of the DNA of the entire thing. And I, I think I think they go too far. Uh, when they talk about how the show celebrated failure, I don't know that it necessarily goes to that place but i think that there's like an example right there um where people would get that uh that opinion from um but the i love that I, I, again it's that it's that gen x apathetic uh you know feeling that was also inserted into into your show there you bring up something um i think that's a i think there might be something here um, because I mean, I think about my stand up friends and people who, uh, they perform and sometimes they're in a mood where they don't want to pop the crowd, but they want to pop the standups at the back of the room and they want to make them laugh. And, and, and it seems to me like there were times where on the writing staff, you guys would want to break each other up or make Dave laugh, or do something for him. And it wasn't even necessarily meant for. Uh, maybe I'm going a little too far with that, but but was there ever the spirit of we want to make each other laugh? We want to make Dave laugh more so than, you know, almost like an inside well, joke? I, uh, it's funny. Pe people have uh, asked that question uh, to me and to Simpsons writers. Yeah. Like, were you writing with the with the audience in mind? And I'm saying, like, honestly, no. Yeah. We, 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 we were very much, we were pretty much always writing to make each other laugh yep. and to make you know, people who weren't in the room at that time on the Simpsons, like Tom Gamble and Max Frost, yep. you know, things that, that that they would would think were funny. And uh, yeah, I was always like, you know, probably the best joke writer I ever worked with was uh, George Meyer. Hmm. And uh, uh, I came after his time on the Simpsons, uh, mm -hmm. but but uh, I was there with him on the Simpsons, just a guy you'd really want to make laugh. So an episode uh, I wrote, uh in where homer rides on the blimp and his fantasy of the blimp ride is uh <laughs> you know this is his fantasy yeah is the 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 uh pilot uh saying you know see the circular pattern down on those fields that's from central pivot irrigation <laughs> homer goes you know wow <laughs> of course being something so meant mundane <laughs> is his fantasy. Yeah. You know, after I turned in the draft, you know, George poked his head in my office and uh and and uh just you know pointed and saying, you know, said central pivot irrigation, <laughs> just nodded in approval and moved on. And yeah, I, you know, so uh you know I'm 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 not near as secure as Jim Downey. <laughs> <laughs> I remember and cherish and cling to these moments. <laughs> and, and I'm not about to uh, suggest anything for the Letterman channel. To trot them out. Yeah, no, let's not. <laughs> you know, uh, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to share a few here. I, I remember, boy, uh, yeah, I, I, I wrote two different bits for Marv Albert, both of which kind of fell flat. Uh, <laughs> yes. And, and, and uh, uh, you know it, it happens. You you know you're trying to try not to, to just try to get a decent batting average, you know. And you always feel bad about it. But I feel much worse uh, uh, sending someone else out there, right? <laughs> in flames. And I get I have you know I I get the idea. It's been you know about thirty five years, and I get the idea. If I ran into Marv, he'd, <laughs> he'd 
you. I think Marv's average on Letterman is fine. I think uh, when you look at the, <laughs> at the, the, the tonnage yeah. of good versus the tonnage of uh, didn't quite work. Uh, I think you're, I think, uh, you know, the former is certainly the heavier. Um, uh, okay. So we're almost at your two hours. I want to be very respectful of your time here. Uh, oh, this is great. Oh, I, uh, okay. Well, I, you know, I have some ideas. Well, you edit about... it down or make it to do whatever you want. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I do want to, by the way, in the future, I want to uh, do some mashups. I want to throw some writers in here at the same time with me, maybe, and have them reminisce and talk about things like that. Clearly, you're a guy who I'm going to put on that list. You, uh, these these things are just keep coming back and coming back. Um, before I move to, I want to ask a couple little Conan questions. I want to talk about Ferguson a little bit, um, and I want to finish off by hearing the story. Both. Uh, of my uh, 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 of my conciliaries for this episode, uh, both told me to ask you to uh, ask the the story about how you met your wife at the toy fair. Oh, that's, um, and, that's and so I want to finish man. with that because I think it's really sweet. Um, but uh, you're a Simpsons writer. Mm -hmm. Conan O'Brien is on staff and finds out he's replacing David Letterman while you're on staff of The Simpsons. Do I have my math right? Oh, uh, no, I had just left The Simpsons. You had just left The Simpsons. Okay. But you had worked with Conan enough. Oh, yeah. Well, I think his I did, shows I did. that he would put on, you know, for, for the writers to, you know, the monorail, like the, the, the beautiful, amazing mind of Conan O'Brien that yeah. so many people talk about, they get to see in private, never mind the public stuff. Uh, when you found out he was taking over late night, what was the reaction? I thought, great, great idea. Yeah. This you saw it a, right away. I, I, oh, look, I saw, I met him when I was 20 and he was 18. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, oh, I could, I, no, I love to talk about Conan a bit. And I, look, I was, I was uh, on record uh, early on. I, I remember telling people, that's the guy you want your sister to marry. Oh, what a great <laughs> compliment. Well, well, yeah, but, but it's just because, because he, he will absolutely slay you. At, at uh, uh, Thanksgiving dinner or whatever. Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah. And he'll be nice to her, you know? Perfect. So, and and the funny thing, like I say, I was president of Lampoon when he got on. And this isn't, this is me uh, passing on something that he's insisted upon, is is that for that reason, you know, that he looked up to me uh, at, at that time, you know, just, I was, yep. A crucial two years older. Yep. And he, he's always said uh, that, you know, like you were like Dean Martin to my Jerry Lewis. And, um, and wow. you know, he's a very dear friend. And of course, I think he, he appreciates talking to people who he's known all, all this time, you know, for, for so many years, you know, staying yep. friends with them. But yeah, he, he uh, oh, I know. And, and uh, of course, a, a known but not that well known tale is, uh, Sometime in the mid '80s, we we had an opening on the staff, and I was very much, you know, I was Conan was it was between Conan and another guy, and yep. and it was it was you know the thought was oh we got all these Harvard Lampoon guys too many Harvard Lampoon guys let's get a, a fresh Midwestern what else we need a different perspective no more yep. Harvard Lampoon guys which sounds good except uh, the guy in question was Conan <laughs> so don't don't have any absolute rules uh, might be the the lesson there you know i uh i've heard that story a bunch of times and 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 one of the times was when dave was on conan's show and 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 so dave was his sentiment immediately as soon as uh that story was brought out he said uh is there is it too late for retribution is there someone that we can is there someone we can punish for this injustice uh which i loved uh yeah conan i mean conan was my one-two punch for years, I'd watch Letterman and Conan, Letterman and Conan. I loved Conan. Uh, much respect to the franchise of Late Night and where it is now. But I thought uh, of all of the people who hosted Late Night, Conan was the only one to take the spirit of the show, Late Night, and continue it on with his own spin. Um, yeah. Now, Late Night to well, me I, looks yeah, like... No, Go ahead. I always thought at the core of his own spin with it, I always know it noticed was uh you know dave would do the found items pieces supermarket pines or yeah. small town news things that were real and he'd show yes. them and, and he'd do a joke on him and of course conan very early on would do something that looked like a real ad and i, I wish i had a, an example of one to quote and you'd zoom in on it 
in in suppose you know in the small print. But one thing that's uh, troubling to me here, <laughs> you can see written here, and it would just be something very you know demented and, and yes. hilarious. Yes. And watching early, I I did think like, oh okay, good. This is this is uh, you know he's he's putting his own spin on it. Yeah, very much so. Um, and the yeah. tone was 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 similar but different. If you if there's too many, yeah. um, it's that show uh, that you guys built had so much complexity to it and it wasn't just a one trick pony neither was late night with conan o'brien um and and since then i feel like they've gone uh you know a lot of the a lot of the shows look the same and no offense to anybody who's in late you know it's 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 a tremendous um uh, thing that you're doing putting on a late night show uh they all have their strengths and weaknesses but i just thought that conan's late night was um was so creative and it just it spoke to me and so that was my one two punch for a long time and then i had a one two three punch for a long time and that was i adore craig ferguson um yeah. and the yeah, fact that right. you got to go there uh, now i mean we're 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 beyond time where i can get into that we're wetting the appetite for the next one <laughs> well um, it, we don't have to get into it that much because uh i you know i got to go there and fail essentially <laughs> is that is that what it was is that yeah it? Yeah, but yeah. You were no, there for it, like a hundred episodes. Yeah, no, I, I got it was a very surprise. Well, it was a very surprise call uh, to 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 come uh, to come do. Uh, uh, you know, they asked me out of the blue, uh, "Do you want to run the show?" You know, or wow. be be you know the head writer, sort of. But the, now, the, was this from uh, Peter Lasalle? Yeah, yeah, Peter yep. Lasalle, and and I honestly, uh, uh, I had mixed feelings about it because the whole time we were, I was doing Letterman. I, I always thought what the Steve O'Donnell, I always thought like, boy, I don't think he, I could do his job. Uh, yeah. You know, just, just a uh, special set of skills. Yes. Thinking of stuff, but also being organized and focused enough to look at the big picture, to think of new bits to do and to, to deal with, with uh, the host yeah, and all that. And uh, I, I, I always thought kind of suspected yeah, boy, I don't think I'd be able to do that. And uh, I, uh, but uh, how many people get the chance to prove it? So I, I went over. <laughs> so I went to Craig's show and, and uh, I, I had some things maybe working against me is that I was all of a sudden put in charge of, of a bunch of people who'd been there for a couple of years. Yeah. So I'm coming in like, well, okay, I guess I'm the boss now. Uh, so uh, where's, where's the sound stage? You know, what's, you know, I, I, I didn't know the voice of the show uh, as well as those guys. And, and uh, it just, uh, it just did, didn't click. And, and after a few months, Peter Lasalle told me, you know, this isn't working. I the said, chemistry's not there. Well, and, and, Peter and I said, legendary yeah, I know it's fine. And uh, Craig yeah. Ferguson later came on, you know, a couple of years out, it came on my wife's show, uh, Hot in Cleveland and was uh, Jane Lee's boyfriend in a few episodes. And he was, he was very classy about it. So uh, no hard feelings. That show I'm, is. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I, I just, I adored that show uh, for the run, which would, by the way, include the shows that you ran. So for what it's worth, I loved it. Um, uh, did you meet Tom Keeney there or did you know him before? Uh, no, I met, I, I met him there and you know, Everyone there, I was a ship that passed in the night. I gotcha, I gotcha. He would have been a segment producer there at the time, I think. Um, Ups and downs. I hear you. I, I but uh, at the end of the day, I just, uh, I just love the fact that that there's three of my very favorite, uh, you yeah. know, helmsmen of, oh, of, of broadcasting. No, Ferguson, that I love that you work for all three. No, of them. Ferguson's great. I would, I would, I would, I would uh, be just off camera thinking, oh boy, this this, this guy is so great. Um, <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna fire me before. Be <laughs> I, 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 you know, listen, if I had, if I had provided him with uh, tons of, of uh, brilliant, memorable uh, stuff, uh, it would have worked out great. I was, I, you know, just, just didn't have the, uh, the talent stack uh, to, to thrive in that it job. Just, the chemistry oh. wasn't quite what it oh. needed to be. Um, I love uh, Peter Lasalle is on my dream list. Conan's on my dream list. These are people who just, I yeah. just appreciate so much uh, their contributions to everything. You've gotten a chance to work with so many great, great people. Um, before I will say, we, yeah, working, working with, if you get to work with your friends, that's, that's like cheating life. Right. You, 
And we're we're kind of we're kind of uh, circling towards the end there with that idea that you've gotten a chance to do that for a long, long time. A lot of folks can't say that they get to work with their college dorm buddies who they bonded with for decades, and and you've certainly gotten a chance to do that. Uh, before we get you to tell your the story about how you met your wife, can Don pop in? He's got a couple questions for you. I think he's going to ask you about the talking dog and something else. Hey. So, uh, Don, if you want to pop in, unlike some uh, former writers, I do not have a hard out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Fred. Yeah, you, you Fred. go, Fred. I'm talking to you. <laughs> my name, Dave Rogowski. My Jeff Martin. That's my name. And I went to write for the. <laughs> uh, Rogowski's getting an email after this episode. Don, thank you very much for popping okay, on here. You know what? Uh, let me tell you one. Uh, yes, I sir. Just, I want another. Uh, 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 for a while there, when we were doing like we were doing the dancing waters and and the throw cam and what's how wearing and stuff like that, and I was thinking. Man, are we are we navel gazing here? You know, too much. Are we just, you know, here we're doing stuff and it's hip because we're doing it. You know, because we have and but in uh trying to blow that stuff up a little. Uh, a wraparound bit I did that I I that I liked thinking back on was uh, uh, in the course of the episode, the dancing waters fell into disrepair. It was like, you know, it's so we do the dancing waters and, you know, halfway through Paul's going, Jay, Dave, it's, it's, it's terrible to see that the dancing waters have fallen into disrepair. And you show him, we've, you know, they're like rusting out, you know, <laughs> they look kind of, and then still later in the episode, like, oh, Dave, this is really terrible. The dancing waters, it's become a hangout for crummy teenagers. <laughs> and uh, it's now got like graffiti and trash on it. And Dave Rogalski and uh, one of the one of the young girl interns are just slouched in front of Dave's desk, smoking cigarettes sullenly. <laughs> and then toward the end of the episode, a uh, cute little girl we used to use says, "You know, D you know, Paul sounding like Jerry Lewis at the end of the telethon." Dave, I have some, you know, wonderful news. And, and uh, she she holds up a jar. Dave, you know, Mr. Letterman. Uh, you know, school children from all over the country have sent in their pennies. <laughs> when Paul goes, and Dave, they've saved enough to restore the dancing waters. And then you come back, you know, for the final minute of the show, and <laughs> the water, you know, they're glistening. They're better than new and, and, and all that. So it, it would, I, I, uh, I, 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 I would always take pleasure in, you know, if you could do a one-off, theme to an episode yep and sustain it all the way through you know and and, and uh mine were usually more conceptual than things something like the 360 degree show yeah uh, i think that was randy cohen's idea yeah and on the on on the it's hard to get it perfect i remember halfway through the episode the notion was uh larry bud melman dances on the ceiling <laughs> which you get a little you know it's like fred astaire and royal wedding you get a little room space <laughs> you have you stick a chair to the ceiling you have a chandelier come up from the floor and if you flip the image pretty good there it is done it looks yep. like he's dancing on the ceiling and at rehearsal it's like hey that's pretty you know hey that's this is going to be good that's that's nifty what a, what, a, what a nifty effect and only it works if you do it straight up on the hour and with what with one thing or another we got to it at about seven after <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a little off. Talk about the views. Like that, that you're not going to get rid of me. You're not going to get rid of me. Everything reminds me of something else. Good. The, the, the Kasparov chess match with Dave. I think it was Adam Resnick's idea. They do yep. a movie day. They talk on the phone. Sounds good. Sounds funny. And, and Kasparov played his part of when Dave <laughs> took his pawn. Like the audience cheered. And I remember Kasparov said, oh, you're going to pay for You're going to pay for that, my friend. You know? <laughs> in, in, in like a nice Bond villain. But... I guess it was a transatlantic call. There was like a half second delay. And oh boy, half a second kills come, you know? Yep. You could never get the momentum because there was just that, uh, you know, it's tough. It's tough. You know, it's got a secret sauce to it. Yeah. Don, so, Don, what did you want to ask, Jeff? Sorry, Don. Um, that's Don't okay. Be. This I'd, is great. I'd rather, listen, I'd rather listen to you than to me. Um, or me, for that matter. <laughs> I want to ask you about the LA shows. Um, and if the staff was taken aback, this is what I felt when I, when I watched it, that the staff and Dave were taken aback by the, the by the audience enthusiasm and that, that 
that you guys were were working within you're in New York and you're living within your bubble and mm -hmm. here you're in LA and there's this it's the first time that I felt that that you guys were aware that that how how popular the show was and and you were not accustomed to that or used to that or just taken aback by it well um, again yeah just camping out all night yeah uh, you know just wow really really and and uh, um the uh i remember people getting to their seat who presumably you know had been waiting you know oh man you know 20 hours and you know you know these frat house type guys you know getting to their seat like yes yeah like it's a sporting oh, event no. and 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 uh, i i i'm this it's very flattering but i really i also i did wince just thinking you know we're just gonna do some comedy yeah. and bring out a guest and it's all gonna be over in an hour it's it's uh but but yes pretty 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 wonderful and and again i, I couldn't I was just always astonished that you would bring up these references and uh, there were no blank looks in, in the college audience. <laughs> yeah. in particular. But, 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 but was that a surprise? I mean, did, did you, again, the, the bubble versus the outside world. And, and this is the first time you've experienced or the show has, has experienced the outside yeah. world. It, um, it, uh, um, I think perhaps, yeah, perhaps, dripping down from Dave. Uh, I, I think in a way it was, it was a bit of a, uh, an odd shrug, you know, it, just like, it, I think we all kind of rushed to an attitude of what are you doing? It's, it's not, yeah. it's not that, you know, you're treating us like the Beatles and we're, we're right, right. you know, it's, it, it's a, it is a talk show. No, it's a parody of a talk show. It's, it's subverting the whole talk show. <laughs> It's, it's talking to celebrities and doing comedy. It's, 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 yeah, I love it too. But it was always, I remember at the uh, Vegas shows, somebody asking like Sandy Frank for his autograph. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from, from his appearances on The Fugitive Guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or at the, the Chicago. Well, it was, it was great going to those other cities to see that, to see that yeah. firsthand. Just, right, just, right. And, and in Chicago, they had up the, you know, welcome uh, Letterman, uh, you know, those banners that they they have in big cities. And again, people, people just waiting all day to get in to the old Chicago theater. Fun memories of that, boy. I remember. Uh, do you remember the uh, the Chris Elliott? He did a Legs Diamond. Uh, thing. Legs Diamond, sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Well, the, Peter <laughs> Allen was on Broadway at the time playing a gangster. So uh, he he. He did that, uh, and he, he, Steve O'Donnell and I played the chorus boys behind him, doing a little dance with machine guns, and uh, makeup put, uh, uh, you know, like gliss, you know, sort of rouge on it, just made us up like chorus boys, and <laughs> backing up a little, Steve O'Donnell played a cop a lot, I would play a cop, a fireman, and things like that on the show, and I'd put it on, and I'd look, and I'd go like, no, nah, I look like I'm playing dress up, I, I, I somehow, I just lack the whatever <laughs> cops had the physical confidence to pull this off convincingly and i would i remember uh preparing to be a chorus boy i thought well surely my my uh you know innate manliness will come through and uh, i look no nah, no nah. i i i look exactly like a chorus boy <laughs> so but, but at the very end of that skit dave turns to you and says you have children <laughs> <laughs> Are you proud of yourself? <laughs> I did, and they, I did, and they, they, uh, they. My wife and the nine-month-old daughter joined me. <laughs> he also went into that trip, and yeah. We... The the other thing I want to ask, and uh, and I might be taking this too far, it was, was the was the talking dog incident with. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, wow. And, and 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 if you were aware at the time that Bob and Ray had done a similar bit back in the early 50s that that I think the the early Comedy Central had aired. 
but I, I don't know if you were aware of it at the time. No, I'm not. I mean, I, I, I listened to what uh, Bob and Ray I could, mm -hmm. but no, no, that, 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 that uh, I did not. And uh, that idea wasn't even mine, but somehow it just fell to me to be off camera being the voice of one of a bunch of dogs ran right, by but... Dave's desk. And it was like, hi, Dave, hi, Dave, hi, Dave. And my dog went and sat in the chair and so well, he, he he left and then he then he came and, and then, then he Dave back. asked him back and and you're talking as the dog uh and what i what i thought was was just uh, uh essential late night was the whole thing was unscripted yeah that was an unscripted oh, wow that was an unscripted bit that went great well it was you know i you know I, i'm just sort of saying uh, i'm gonna stay here for a while dave okay he says uh would you like some water and he yeah. holds his water and the dog looks in the water glass you don't know you know i don't know what he's going to do so off camera i said uh no <laughs> <laughs> well. which, which got a big laugh well, and, and dave and dave cracked up that, that's yeah what yeah, yeah no dave was obviously enjoying it yeah. and then the dog yawned so you know i'm gonna uh, <laughs> Dave, and, and are you I, tired there? And I go, ah, yeah, you know how it is. You know. <laughs> so what letter are you up to, Dave? And he I, said, letter, uh, letter number four. Pause, pause. I go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I got the sense from Dave that you that you took it a little bit too far when you said, "Oh, that's great. You should give the writers a raise." I did. I know. Well, I, I'm roof. <laughs> I'm a little roof. It, it was the bit went well. Yeah, yeah. Get another letter, and I thought, and I guess I was feeling my oats, and I, yeah. I said, uh, uh, you know, hey, that's pretty funny. I said, whoever wrote that deserves a raise. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dave they, said, they, you're, you're pushing your luck. Right. <laughs> and it's like, doggone, and well, it's like the tiny t-shirt. If only I'd stopped them. <laughs> what are you going to do? But the thing is, you remember exact quotes from three decades ago four yeah. decades ago, which is kind of ridiculous well, it was a it was a special time so yeah. yeah no it's well that's listening to these uh yeah I, everything triggered something steve young says uh you know uh, i never actually met tony randall and i'm thinking i did he, he encouraged me to write <laughs> for the theater you know, <laughs> in the makeup chair right all right but, I'm also, well, i was only a few years you gotta understand i was only a few years out of i was only 22 when I started, not that long out of high school. So uh, speaking of camping out all night, people who were guests on the show, like, uh, you know, Robert Plant was yeah. on. And like when I'm when I'm 17, the guys might, yeah, we're going to New Orleans this weekend. We're gonna, we're gonna camp out all night outside the Superdome to see Zeppelin, you know, that kind of, and, uh, uh, and to have, you know, he walks in the, walks into the, the makeup room. Yeah, promote his band, uh, the Honey Drippers, I think it was called. But those are real favorite guests of mine. Uh, people like Henry Winkler or the Bee Gees, you know, who who were just really on top mm -hmm. when I was in high school. And it's just very surreal that they'd walk in and they say hi and you know chat with you if you wanted to. And I Steve think Martin, of course, was so big when I was in high school and those are the days when he was playing arenas and and I, I vibe like everyone you instantly see oh this guy's hilarious and also he's bringing something different to the table what what Letterman did for the talk show format he sort of did mm -hmm. to stand up just this is a this is a whole no I, I hate to, I hate getting in you know talking about philosophical shifts in comedy but you know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. absolutely there's right. a there, I think there's a the photo that you shared uh, uh, either on Facebook or or uh, Twitter, uh, you in the dressing dressing room with with George Brett. Yeah, well, I'm such a baseball fan. I've got I got pictures yeah. of uh, Mickey Mantle, Phil Necro, Buddy Biancolana. Mm -hmm. Okay, which, that was a bit we did. One, that was my joke. We did it once. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I talked about Elvis has left the building, and uh, we. Pete Rose was counting down to breaking Ty Cobb's record. It was a one-shot joke. Now you can keep track of it. It was the Buddy Biancolana hit counter. He had like 51 hits, you know. Mm -hmm. And and uh, one-shot joke. And I was just thinking, okay, who's a light-hitting middle infielder? And uh, at that time, the Royal shortstop was Buddy Biancolana. And then 
uh, talk about luck. The Royals reach the World Series, win the World Series. Bianca Lana has a good World Series. During it, Bob Costas, who I'd, I'd become friendly with uh, from him doing the show, and who I'm actually still friendly with, by golly, uh, <laughs> uh, said, um, uh, uh, on the telecast said, Buddy Bianca Lana, known not only to Royals fans, Fans of Late Night with David Letterman. <laughs> Buddy Biancana hit Countdown. They acted like we only did it once. It right, was a right. shot gag. They acted like it was a bit. But I'm watching it uh, with with uh, my girlfriend, later my wife, pointing at the screen, sputtering. <laughs> That's my joke. They're talking about my <laughs> Wow. That's great. And, All right, I'm 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 gonna go, Jeff. It, it's a it's an honor and a pleasure to to finally. Come I hope we meet in person you. someday, Don. Very very much. Me too. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Don. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I'm really glad that he because he he noted the talking dog down here, um, but I'm really glad he came on so you could get that that entire exchange. Well, I didn't realize how un how unscripted that was. Uh, okay. And I mean, I guess well, that's the only well, way you can do it, right? Well, it's a dog. Yeah, you that's have the only to way you can do it. Dog. Yeah. No, no, that was that was unscripted, and and uh, even though I pushed it one one joke too far, uh, uh, so many things. You oh, know, I, I totally did, disagree. I think oh, you yeah, did that race, well, even today. Uh, today for today, oh my gosh! Like, well, I did that with Steve Martin. Let me tell you, yeah. Did, this um, again, he was the comedy king when I was in high school. It was still, you know, very much at his peak, and and uh, yeah, I had an idea for a. He was coming on the show, and I had an idea. Uh, what if uh, Steve wants to throw a pencil through the window and make the crash sound that, yeah. that, and um, only he keeps missing. <laughs> the That's the idea. Well, we'll get him on the phone. They got him on the phone. He's very nice. And uh, uh, you know, and I, I explained that idea to him and right away he, he laughs. He goes, Oh, I like it. And, uh, and so when he came in, in, you know, now I'm not, I, I don't mean to gush like a show of his phony, but that's, that is the most professional comedy guy you'll ever, you know, he comes yeah. in very polite, but just like totally focused, total, you know, always came so prepared. Well, and, and, and right up to the end of Late that, Show too. He would that, weeks in advance be calling in saying, my appearance oh, is coming up. I'm preparing already for the ideas, things like that. And it seems like he was like that from the very start. And, yes, he was an all time great. Well, anytime he did like an award show, he would be ready. He always had a great bit prepared and he never thought I'm so great. All I need to do is just show up. He never yeah. fell into that trap, you know, and, or, or, uh, you know, if it's not funny, that'll be great. No, you said earlier, failure's part of it. Uh, it's part of it. It's, 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 uh, it's not a willful part of it. Uh, no, uh, it, it's it make the best of it. Anyway, he, a um, couple of things. Uh, he did another bit. Uh, he came on with gambling tricks and he came in and, and uh, worked with me and Steve and we worked out the bit uh, and it had a great bit in it. Do you remember where he shuffled cards? Sure. He, yes. he said, you know, watch that. He shuffled cards. He yeah. says, here, did you see it? A trick shuffle? No, I say, and then replayed it. And it's this long drawn out where he's writing ace, <laughs> yeah. bending a card, he's taping, you know, and now I'm flagging the card. <laughs> That got a huge laugh. Yeah. Oh, and we yeah. did one more after that that uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, do quite as well. And, you know, and after we, and they come back from commercial and, and uh, uh, Steve said, ah, we should have stopped. We went one too far, didn't we? <laughs> yep. So it's, that may be the theme uh, of tonight's show. But, you know, something when, uh, speaking of uh, memories triggering things, when when yeah. Fred Graver said he'd gotten the uh, a birthday message for Dave yep. recorded uh, by Steve Martin, he didn't say what the message was. It was so funny. It was it was something to the effect of like this very fulsome, gracious uh, Dave. It's Steve Martin. I just want to say, you know, happy birthday. You're you're a, a great guy, a great talent, and uh, I wish you just the happiest birthdays and and many many more. Then under his breath, that ought to hold the bastard. <laughs> You know, like as he's turning it off. 
<laughs> well, someone said that about Steve. I forget who it was talking about uh, Stephen Marty's show. And they talk about how there's no sentiment whatsoever in that show. And I think that that's something that um, you guys did a really good job of too, is, is, is uh, don't get me wrong. I love sentiment and I love the last six weeks of the late show. You know, you talked about that. I love that, but to get to that, I think you had to have a whole bunch of time where sentiment was almost mocked a little bit. And, and, uh, People like that, but yes, but people like that and like Penn and Teller who yes. performed magic as they as they mocked it just were yep. at the show like a glove. And and uh yeah, Steve Martin the same way. And yeah, but just just when you know he'd come back after you'd worked with him successfully once before, and he comes back and he's like, Hey, how's it you know, comes over, good to see you again, let's get to work, shake your hand. Times like that, you think, oh my god, what a what a what a what a bless what a rare privilege it is to do this show and i'll tell you another one uh, that yeah. uh, is an, a salute to kathleen anchors that i like to remember is i'd written a viewer mail response something like asking dave about being on a diet or something and one week, oh boy i remember one time this was and the idea i just had was he's interviewing don king and he's so hungry that he's at one point he starts uh, don king turns into the proverbial giant chicken leg <laughs> With Don King hair, only with Don King hair. Of course, yeah. And he, you know, and at one point, you know, climbs. He can't help it. He climbs on him, you know, and starts eating him. And uh, so, you know, and and you know, just a piece to put together, you know. And uh, somehow or other, I had had to leave the show before finding out what viewer mails had been accepted, and and didn't come in. And I I, I came in late the next day, uh, again for a good reason, and and. I go into the studio and there is a six foot tall chicken leg with Don <laughs> in the guest chair. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Steve, for pitching it. Thank you Steve, for agreeing <laughs> to do it. But <clears throat> what 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 it what it gave me in that moment, I think, was like just that that childlike sense of you think of something when you're a kid, you draw a picture of something whatever and you think yeah. why doesn't some adult build this for for me you know so yep. so you know uh wonder, wonderful to have things like that happen and boy if I, i'm just i'm cramming in all i can here oh just this is great i love remembering, it remembering great days like uh there was one where uh dave's saying you know paul we're cooped up here we're in the greatest city in the world we should get out there and live you know we're not living Okay, let's go. Let's go live. And what it was was a uh, a remote of Dave and Paul just having fun in the park. Yeah. <laughs> yep. As music plays, you know, and 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 uh, he he's going. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, you know, they're just throwing the frisbee, and it had a nice spirit to it. And at the end of it, they like hold up a couple. We we just ad lib that. Hey, can we steal your purse at gunpoint? <laughs> this couple, and they're like, okay, and then we laugh. <laughs> And then you you cut to something we shot in the studio, which is Dave and Paul in a hot air balloon. <laughs> in a hot air balloon. And then they're on it, you know, popping champagne and pouring it out. And it and the whole piece had a nice spirit to it and some big laughs, simply because it was what it was. We had a nice day in the park. Yeah. And, and I remember uh uh Dave um asking uh asked, saying to me, does this uh does this whole thing have a, a gay subtext? <laughs> And I, I just, I said, like, it's so much more effective when it's understated. And that's oh, what, totally. You know, that's, well, that's or you go back to Steve Martin. I don't know if you saw this on Late well, Show. That's what he got. Oh, yeah, that was after my time. That's a great bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, after your time for sure. But again, it's in the same spirit. And then they just, okay, well, let's go well, all the way with it, right? Well, that was overt. And actually, sure. this, one, this one didn't have a gay subtext. No, 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 no. But, but it's I, the, I, I'm just, that was, I'm just giving you a little behind the scenes. The evolution. Thing we think um, and giving you a little behind the scenes thing uh we laughed about. That's all. Yeah. Oh no, I appreciate that because yeah. again, like I, I I think that I think we've witnessed again, there's so much evolution that's there from from yeah. from from current times all the way back to there. We saw that evolve from being, you know, okay, that'll be subtext, that'll be funny in the background to yeah. when it became okay, let's just go overt with it and right. both play, you know, we have two different time um, periods. Hal, uh, I love seeing uh, like that Hal Gurney was was uh, remembered on this show because yes. uh, he was just like, it, it was this great, wonderful soul. I think he, I found out later he like, was, his hobby was woodworking. 
And it's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Just yeah. <laughs> crafting beautiful things. That seems exactly right. And it just, just, just had a, a, a wonderful sense of, of, uh, you know, dealing with Dave, when to cut away from something. Yeah. What's funny. And I, I, oh, he's a character on the show. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, totally. And, uh, uh, another a viewer mail response I wrote that, that went well was the notion of it was that someone had broke a woman had broken up with Dave because he smoked cigars. <laughs> and the memory of it was Lori Guthrie, a, a, a lady on the staff, and he uh, they're like coming home after a date, and Dave blows smoke in her face, <laughs> thinking like, "Bye in a week, I'll, you'll be Mrs. David Letterman." Ha <laughs> ha. And uh, she she goes, "Well, good night." And he goes, "Oh right, you know, oh coming in for the kiss." And the cigar, which wasn't that really lit, goes yeah. right into her eye. <laughs> and we added on, you know, the sizzling sound of bacon frying. <laughs> you know, she's like screams, oh, and you go, oh dear, well, put something on that. And, you know, she goes in the house. And he's like, oh, she's a sweet kid, tosses his, you know, cigar in the bushes and the house burns down. That was the best. <laughs> And I remember being in the control room and and uh, that got a, a really, it, it got a big response. Dave putting his cigar <laughs> in Lori's eye. And I remember how the, the mildest soul imaginable just saying, uh, physical cruelty is always funny. <laughs> <laughs> just shaking his head in, in, in wonder. So, boy, thanks. <laughs> Thanks for letting me remember all this stuff. Are you kidding me? Thank you for doing this. Were you there for? Oh, Don's back. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. jump in. I got to add uh, the. Uh, you're talking about Steve Martin, um, and the and the and the pencil throwing, and he ends up stabbing Adam Resnick, who has to be yes. part of the way on a stretcher. Adam brought through. Yes, Adam. What part of the gag? I mean, they, they'd had a lot of gags in it, but one was, you know, it's just Steve just couldn't hit that window. And at one point, Adam Resnick is carried through by by on a gurney <laughs> with pencils. And uh, uh, and his casualty, the uh... is his gambling tips. So when when he goes to he and Dave go to, to go to play roulette, and yeah. and and, and there and Tommy Casabona has to replace one of the wheels, but he, he inadvertently leaves one of the wheels on the table while Dave and, and Steve are procrastinating and they come back and, and they, they crack up because they realize, oh, this bit's screwed up now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Tommy looked around and he was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, like I say, no, it, 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 uh, it built to a huge satisfying laugh on the marking the cards. And uh, <laughs> all right, if only we'd <laughs> stopped there. Thank you. Who, who played the uh, the chicken leg? Do you remember? I believe it was an inert chicken leg. Thank you. It was, oh, okay. All right. It was, nearly, it was a prop. I got however, you. however, Sandy Frank played the giant rat in The Incredible Shrinking right. Man, but I played the giant rat when David <laughs> Paul were chained to a column. Right. And I, I was wearing a velvet cape and I was strolling around uh, oh, uh, cracking a whip. Was it Spike who saw that and said, "I need yeah. to write for that show"? My memory, Don. Yes, I, I thought that was that was a, a an odd, surreal, yeah. mildly successful bit that I found out years later. Uh, Spike Fairston said, "Oh, I got to be on this show." Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm out again. Thanks okay. again. <laughs> Bye, right. Don. Uh, you've reminded me of. Uh, were you part of the um, of the crew who wrote uh, when Dave stole Hal Gurney's wife? Oh, uh, I think you know uh, Gamble and Pross. Is that uh, Gamble and Pross? Okay, but, that was uh, genius. That was a genius. Uh, that was great package. It, Absolutely. My favorite. My favorite line from that was uh, Dave saying he won the the Dave's date in that was Lori Guthrie, same girl. I, I just um, yeah. I guess, uh, we would plug her into. Uh, Absolutely. Shout out to know. Lori. Yeah, uh, those parts. Um, but uh, yeah, Dave instantly falls head over heels for Hal Gurney's battle on his life. <laughs> and the thing I remember is, uh, well, you know, him saying, you know, how he wants, you know, telling Paul he wants her. And, and uh, he says, uh, you know, well, did you, gee, Dave, uh, they, he's married to Hal and they seem happy. And Dave goes, well, Hal Gurney doesn't have a monopoly on happiness. I want my <laughs> I just thought that's the most small-hearted. 
line imaginable. But you know, Gamble and Pross, they had that great touch with the you know those remote pieces like uh, you know they took my show away, which Jim yeah. identified as that opened up the show. You know, no, you know, I think Dave would have said, "What you want me to act? You know, you want to go get an actor if you want someone to act." And it was no, Dave. I think you could be funny doing this stuff. You know, definitely. That's a great that's a great way of stretching Dave because he thought he was in that box and and just like you getting him to do something with with musicality around it or whatever um you know they're able to to show no 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 these you can be funny when it comes to after school special type um type type things oh, did, you and Paul did you guys bond because Paul plays by ear you you have a you play the piano by ear did you guys uh, ever do anything musically uh, any bonding uh, that way he was always off at a love in somewhere, you know. <laughs> Showbiz, baby. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, look, um, we, we got along. And I, let me tell you something. Um, Paul Paul uh, was very appreciative if you gave him something good. Yeah. And if you gave him something a little half-baked, uh, you know, he was professional about it, but but quite rightly so, you know. Would say like eh, okay, you know all that, but uh, well, early on, <clears throat> like about about my first week there, uh, I, I went to him and said like, you know, hey, you know, because how about when Dave throws to you at the beginning of the show? I got something for you to say. You could say, people ask me what David Letterman's like. I say, as a performer, one of a kind, as a man, one of the kindest. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul instantly, you know, that's the kind that was in his wheelhouse. And oh, he was yeah. like, ah, yeah, yeah. Did you you come up with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> so, so, so uh, uh um yeah, and, and when when we had something good musically like the anthem, it, it was great to work with and or the yeah. time to this thing. Uh yeah, yeah. We, we, I loved Chris Elliott's delivery in the anthem. He was kind of doing almost the Stevie Wonder We Are the World thing, like the swaying <laughs> that he yeah, did. Yeah. Um I've gone back and forth with Hal a little bit. I'm again another dream guest. I would really, really like to get him on here because of the the history. Um, you talk about that. Speaking of history, Don Giller's back. What you got it, Don? I'm, I'm sorry. No, uh, don't I, be. I, this I, is awesome. I meant I meant to mention this earlier. Um, in 2017, I received a certified mail letter from one of those uh, uh, second grade school kids who was in the uh, the late night anthem. I mentioned right. it on the show, yeah. Yeah. And she and she had never seen it. Uh, I think she lived in North Carolina. Um well, uh, what a a lot of people, you know, it's a lot of people saw these things again. There's a good chance to salute you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's no, why I uh, mentioned it. Let me let me thank you. In, <laughs> I mean, let me thank you in person is is uh because uh, uh things well things I remembered. Um I always uh you know. I, I did feel in sync with Dave, you know, I, I, I thought I might uh, get along with him. And I, I've always found extremely handsome guys funny. They're just something funny. Oh, <laughs> well, thank but, you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I don't know. You, you made my compliment for me. Uh, but, but he, and I got to hand it to you. Uh, I, I, um, uh, uh, there was one guy on the show. He was simply a male model. And, uh, he was. I saw him backstage. And it's just like you know. I never remember the guy's name, but it was just like I did think like, all right, there you go. That's the handsomest guy I've ever seen, and, <laughs> and I thought it was funny. And, and when the when the guy came out, you know, when it, in the second half of the show, and, and if I if I recall, Dave just kind of started laughing, <laughs> you know, as he shook his hand and he sat down, and Dave's just like, okay, all right, now obviously you're a real. Good looking guy, you know, and <laughs> just had the same, you know, just had the same reaction uh, I had. And somehow that came up in correspondence with Don. And, you know, five minutes later, you've, 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 uh, you've, you've emailed it to me. And another one you did, my God, that um, <clears throat> I'd played, speaking of Bob Costas, I'd, I'd played in this charity baseball game that Bob Costas had put together. And he was scraping the bottom of the barrel for celebrities and got to me. And, uh, <laughs> The ringer. Yeah. And Jeff, uh, the ringer Martin. And uh, I, 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 in batting practice, I, I actually hit a couple over the fence and uh, uh, a nice, and uh, Robert Klein mentioned it on Letterman. 
said like, why don't you buy Jeff Martin at two home runs? You know, and then he goes like, yeah, this guy's a ball player. It, total waste of America's time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it goes right in your heart. But, <laughs> but oh, 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 like, like it was, it was a thousand points straight to my heart and all that. Don found it, sent it. I call my daughters in. Hey, look at this. You know, uh, what do you think you're old man now? Shrug. And my wife and I actually saw Bob Costas earlier uh, last year. We had lunch with him in New York. Unchanged, you know, classy as ever. And Bob says, you know, now I don't know if you husband ever mentioned this to you, but I can still see the parabolas going <laughs> over the, the fence. And I assured Bob I had, I had mentioned it once or twice. The the, the, the but, truth is, <clears throat> it, it, it's my way of paying you guys back. For all the, the 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 smiles that you gave me, I mean, I'm I'm watching the show alone, and just smiling and saying, "This is on TV. This is this is such funny, surreal, subliminal stuff," uh, and it gives it it always gives me great pleasure, decades later, to to send this back to you. And well, I mean, that's so nice, and and uh, thank you for letting me do this. And uh, I gotta say. Uh, I'm so glad it's it's still a little remembered because because I'd see Jack Parr's name, mm-hmm. and, you know, when I was a kid, like in Mad Magazine Digest, and yep. Jack Parr. My dad would talk, mention Jack Parr, and it's like, not only did I not know who he was, there was absolutely no way to even really to barely. I would have had to go to a good deal of trouble just to see what he looked like. You know, mm-hmm. there, there, I would have had to go to the library. <laughs> Yeah. look it up look it up on microfilm you know so and even you know johnny carson arguably tv's greatest career you know if you like just best at all comers for 28 years or however long it was uh one you know he went off the air and all of a sudden he was so big that you he still you know who he was you know what he did but it's it's also diminished so uh for the people who are interested it's wonderful that some of this stuff is still around and and can still be enjoyed and you know yeah i mean that's 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 the whole point to preserve this well i i deeply appreciate it and we yeah if we're gonna boy i guess we have to finish this somehow you want to i i accept paypal you know (laughs) (laughs) i I owe you i i owe you don no you don't you 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 feed me and i will happily Happily uh, buy you lunch uh, next hmm. time I'm in New York. So um, it's a deal, uh, I, and we'll both be wearing our masks. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm out. Thanks you, again. You, Thanks, Don. Send, send a rider with your conditions, and <laughs> obviously, I, I have no choice but to meet him. You're the talent. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I like again, I, and I'm a Rogan guy too. So he goes three hours all the time with people. My oh man, if 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 uh, this is this is the long form is where the beauty is. We talked about this early on, uh, and I mean I think it's safe to say early on in part one. I think we're going to say that uh, we talked about this. The idea that 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 people will have you guys on. And it's so much deeper than one or two surfacey questions. We have shown that here, um, you know. And and like like Don well, said, you can look it- up you can look up answers to the surface questions. I mean, we 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 talked a bit about yes, you know, about what what the show's all about. And it's yep. like, well, look, Conan wrote a great piece. Bill Simmons wrote a great piece. Yep. You know, go read those. You know, yep. and all that. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for. I'm, I, I'm sure it's clear just for the opportunity to mention some of the the more unsung people to to share things that went on behind the cameras and and uh, what it was actually like. Not everyone is interested in this stuff, but to, no. to the people who are, it's like being a Beatles fan. No, no detail is too small. That's right. That's exactly it, it, right. And that's it, why we're doing the show. Uh, my daughter-in-law didn't know who Johnny Carson was. She's 24. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I was just like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen to Dave and company. I'm not going, I don't know what it is, Jeff. Like, honestly, I've got this thing in They're me. Not on my watch. Huh? I, I, yeah. I, I don't understand why it's there, but uh, it is, and and as far as I'm concerned, not on my watch is it. And 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 if there's a way that we can continue the legacy, like I've been saying, to, I said to Walter Kim the other day, there should be a there should be a reunion show of some sort at Radio City Music Hall or something like that. Like, I mean, uh, get everybody oh. back in one room together again, just like SNL did. Lauren did it for SNL 40, and it was amazing. And and I I would love to see that happen with 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 well, the Letterman and having, Company crew. Having just downplayed 
theory of comedy. I actually, I, I do have one about so maybe something that a reason something inspires uh, uh, such uh, fandom is yeah. it's like the usual business of show business is okay. Try to find out what people want and give it to them. You know, just say, yep. well, what did they like before? Well, let's package it and give that sure. to them. And every now and then uh, you give people something they didn't know they wanted. Yes. And that was very much, you know, that was very much the Beatles. Well, they were great. They were better than everybody before or since. But also, wait a minute, they're British. They got long hair. They're wearing suits. There's four of them. Yep. They're doing drive and rock and roll with these devastating block harmonies. How, how are you going to see that come? And and you can't. And it's just, and everybody said, okay, if you give them something that what they want that they didn't know they wanted, yeah. then they'll follow you anywhere. You, you've opened up a new world to them. And Letterman, we weren't the Beatles, needless to say, but, 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 uh, uh, still, everybody saw this thing that, as we talked about, wait a minute, this is a talk, sh this is familiar, and yet everything's wrong, and the wrongness <laughs> makes it right. And somehow Dave, was his genius, was able to synthesize yeah. these contradictory elements. And it inspired the same loyalty, and I was lucky enough to see it up close twice, because that yeah. was the sentence, too. You know, uh, I, I just, I like, just made my wife I... watch the offer with me. Uh, cause I'm a big Godfather guy. Yeah, and anything I, I can do to get her interest in the Godfather, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Um, uh, and, and, uh, the head of the guy who played the head of Paramount back then, Bob Evans had this, there was a, a, a rivalry with executives and, and the one executive who was vying for his spot was exactly what you're talking about. Let's just give them what they want. And 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 let's and Bob Evans was like, no, 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 no. Let's show them something that they didn't know that they want. And that's what The Godfather represented because it changed everything at the time. Sure, yeah. sure. It doesn't always work, but but uh, no. it, but uh, needless to say, <laughs> it sure worked here. Um, it sure and, worked, and, yeah, when it when it when it when it works, boy. And, you know, I mean, that's just when, you know, it's exciting thing about show business is you never know. You never know. <laughs> um, there, yeah. Were you on The Simpsons when they did the Letterman couch gag, the original one? What was I guess not? What was all it? it was was just the couch gag at the beginning where uh, oh, what? Uh, like the they were on the couch and then suddenly it looked over and they were on the couch of the of 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 David Letterman. Uh, I think that was in the first few years, but uh, it, it wouldn't have been because uh, I I um, when uh, just before we did what that uh, it was the eighth anniversary show right at the Universal Amphitheater and and uh, we went out and. I'd be, let's see, Kevin Kern had gone out, was doing Married with Children, and yeah. uh, uh, I guess Gavin Pallone, the agent, well, I guess was his agent, he says, who, el who else is there at Letterman that I might contact? He mentioned me. Kevin and I had written a lot of stuff together. and, he, and uh, I want to do a tribute show to Kevin, too, by the way. That's another one I want to... Ke Kevin, Ke let me hear. I'll, I'll stop. I, you had said how Kevin, Fred had said how Kevin just, uh, he could just make leaps across time for uh you know with crazy references and he and i in the last couple of seasons on the show of uh, i was at letterman we wrote quite a bit of stuff together and we worked on some shows to, you know we yeah. did hardball together for that matter and, yep. uh, and, uh, but uh i had had an idea for uh maybe we'll do like the late night chess set you know because there was a civil war chess set you know <laughs> where abe lincoln is the king and, you know, oh my god take my money i buy that I would buy that in a second. <laughs> well, I, I wish I'd grabbed it because uh, so I, I was sort of thinking like late night chess set, you know, with like Dave and Terry Gar and you know and, and all the people on the show. Again, it was it was navel gazing, but it seemed sure. promising, you know. And uh, and who would they oppose? And Kevin says, you know, Hitler's Nazi Germany. <laughs> So it was Kevin who would who would come in. It's like okay, that's it, you know. So the the piece exists out there somewhere, and it, it was it was it was it was pretty funny. But he would make those links. We and it was invaluable for things like top ten lists because I remember yeah. just something like a top ten list. Um, uh, uh, top ten. I think it was Harry Hamlin had just been been named people's sexiest man alive. <laughs> top ten duties of the sexiest man alive. <laughs> yeah. And it was Kevin's pitches, uh, journey to the center of the earth to judge world's sexiest mole man competition. <laughs> you know, you, he really, he would pitch things where it's just like, 
holy cow, where did that, where come? did you come up with that? Where did you come from that? So, and yeah, and of course he, you know, uh, he and Sandy Frank, a couple of, a couple of dear friends, uh, no longer with us that, that uh, I'm awfully happy to remember. Let me remember one thing about Sandy. Here, was, before you do that, real quick, yeah. keep, put a pin in that for a second. Uh, 90, 9, 1887, it was a chess set. It was added at the end of the Kasparov compilation. So you can find that on Giller's channel. So there it is. So let's talk yeah, about Sandy. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how it holds up, but uh, oh. it, it was fun to do. They hold up well. Okay, okay let's I'm go gonna, to Sandy. I think, Paul, I think Paul Schaefer was, now I'm remembering it. He says at the start, he goes like, oh, I'm Paul Schaefer. You know me, you know me as a lover of beauty. <laughs> but I'm also a great judge of beauty. So that's an example of, uh, I remember a Paul kind of going like, ha <laughs> you, you, you come up with that? And I go, yes, I did. Nice. <laughs> so I know I'm coming across uh, desperate for approval, I'm sure here, but oh, well. Are you kidding me? No, enough. this is, uh, dude. Well, it helps you remember them. That's for sure. There, there we go. Like that's that's the whole thing. And I mean, um, we're wanting to come up with clips that they can throw out on the official channel anyway. I mean, I'm 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 a, a volunteer. I'm part of the volunteer army of that. So this is this Sandy, is a phenomenal episode of that for doing that. Sandy Sandy Frank uh, yep. was a, a, a lovely guy uh, and just an extremely smart guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like gone to Harvard Law School, become a lawyer, was, you know, decided this is no fun, you know, and, and um, uh, so he, he uh, uh, joined the show. he wrote a lot of smart stuff and uh, a fun behind the scenes memory I have of him is somebody had gotten on, uh, gotten into the building, some, some, some young guy and plastered our, our bathroom up on the 14th floor with his resume. <laughs> you just sort of like hey he'd really love to come work for the show he's it's a, some some guy making an honest effort yeah you know they're thinking i'll do something wacky and it's a wacky show and that'll get sure me out, you know and all that okay no 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 problem you showed initiative but yep. I, and on his resume at the bottom there it says you know special skills where it says things like typing and sandy <laughs> had hand written in among this guy, poor guy's special skills as uh, badly miscalculating the sensibilities of prospective employers. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, and thanks for the chance to remember another very dear, funny, smart guy. Um. Okay. So, so here's my question. Now that you have, uh, uh, now that we've done this for almost three hours, um, wow. have you, uh, are you still willing to come on a future show? That's my question. I, I'd be more than happy to. Yeah, my man. I uh, I want to get like I, I've t I've talked about this with a few other writers. I want to get you two on uh, a couple writers on here at the same time, and I just want to sit back and just let you guys go, and and let exactly what's happened today continually happen. And and there are writers from Late Show who look at you guys as legends like i can't tell you how many people from dave's later incarnations look at you guys as you know the forefathers and and would love to do that so so we want to uh, as we build this show we want to build a community where uh things like that can happen and who knows maybe projects and reunions and these kinds of things um you have certainly certainly made a case for it today jeff i can't thank oh. you enough um, I, I gotta say i i yeah. i had hoped it would be like this because once i started doing a deep dive it, this weekend once i listened to them it's just like oh my well <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of astounded how many memories there are and and how uh clear they are and, and how much i enjoy go back, going back over them I'm, I'm obviously i do and thank you for the opportunity and of i course. wouldn't charge money for it you know mm -hmm. but but uh for the people who are interested uh i'm, I'm happy to do it all day well, the people that in my, uh, you know, no offense to anybody who has come into the community, that sort of thing, the people who are, um, there's no bigger compliment that I could ever get than than one of you, uh, past, present, wherever you are within the Letterman um, mythos, uh, coming back and saying that they have any measure of enjoyment whatsoever. That is my, like, right there. It's like, oh my gosh. And and it's happened a bunch of times. So so today, to hear you say that, um, it really, really delights my heart. Well, I've, uh, I've already said it, but when I was listening to, like, uh, Steve O'Donnell and Jerry Mulligan, I, I, I wanted to, you know, re 
whisper in your ear, they're loving this. Don't worry. It was, ah, it, was, well, it, was, it, was, it was a happy time for us. It's fun to remember. It's flattering. People uh, enjoyed it. And, I appreciate and, that. And, 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 and again, I, I just, uh, I, I, there's the big picture stuff, but I, 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 I'm really so happy to, to remember tiny details on camera or things that were never, ever seen. Uh, yeah. Never. And all of that stuff, uh, you know, the, the smallest of all the way up to the obvious are things that people have affection for. And then if we can provide insights of things that uh, people might not have thought of, that is a, a fantastic uh, service as far as I'm concerned. Um, we're going to finish with a little bit of sentimental because again, sure. uh, both people, by the way, shout out to Shecky. I uh, appreciate you so, so, so much. Shecky, if the show wouldn't exist if it wasn't for him. So, so he, uh, he really helped get the ball rolling. Um, he, you know, Steve O'Donnell had a couple other right, neat little suggestions. Here you go. Here's uh Oh, here's there they are. The clown and Elvis. Oh, he, that's a great picture. I was looking at some show where Shecky was Elvis. There you go. Hey, would you mind emailing me that? I think we found the thumbnail for this episode, or for that's at least one of our episodes. Um, that's awesome. So shout out to Shecky right now. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, both uh, both uh, Shecky and Steve. Um, yeah. This is me and Jerry Mulligan when he was Batman on the show. There's and, there's uh, another thumbnail. You right can't there. quite you can't quite tell. He's giving like the superhero salute. But the fun thing about this is I'm 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 looking very excited to be standing um, next to Batman. Fans yeah. who who know Jerry Mulligan and know Letterman know that that's Jerry Mulligan for sure. Um, I can't yeah. wait to have him back on too. Actually, that's that's a great idea having you two on at the yeah. same time. Oh no, Jerry's a, a good guy. No, I, I I see Jerry when I'm in New York. So oh, um, that's 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 great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But anyway, both Steve and Shecky both said, "Hey, you got to get him to tell the story about how he met Suzanne." Oh, so, that's so nice. Well, the the uh, we were in the, we were going to do a remote at the New York Toy Fair. Yep, which is right there next to the uh, Flatiron Building, just yep. just a building devoted to the the commerce of uh, children's playthings. Yep. And uh, Randy Cohen and I, uh, a day or two before we were going to actually bring the cameras in, went to scout it. You go, you look around, you look for things. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, whether Hoover Dam or whatever, uh, <laughs> Chicago. Uh, and Randy Cohen and I uh, uh, went and um, the the at the uh, Coleco exhibit, this is in yep. the days of Cabbage Patch Dolls, uh, we walked <laughs> in and um, uh, one of the one of the public relations uh, uh women was was standing there and it was like you know i said hey let's ask her to show us around you know <laughs> and uh <laughs> and uh we so we, you know she sort of showed us around and she was just a, a, extremely uh, attractive and charming and i've got you know we had a polaroid camera with us just take pictures just to remind you know like oh and here this this could be a fun place to go this is a uh, uh, <laughs> uh, different place and uh so the 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 toy she was pushing was some toy called Sectars, which I is remember like, Sectars absolutely. Yeah, it's like yep. a puppet. It's like a glove. It's a flying. Well, I could describe <laughs> it. Or uh, we we happen to take a picture if you can oh see. Oh my that. god! So this is you know minutes after uh, I met my wife. There's and, our third thumbnail, by the way. Oh, oh I'll, send, I'll send all these to you. I'll, yeah. I'll see what I got. Happily, happy to do it. And um, <laughs> and that's, yeah, it's neat to have that. It's so neat to have, uh, you know, uh, that that uh, in my possession. And, you know, I, I, I got her. I got her card written on her card. I don't have it on me, but it's, uh, well, I have several jokes. Of course. Absolutely. Jokes I have Flex jokes the muscle. Yep. on it. I also have written on it next to her name the word "cute" <laughs> with an arrow <laughs> to her name. Yeah, a, a, a genuine artifact, boy. And um, <laughs> so she, she, she um, never, uh, you know, she. So she like called me at the Letterman office, uh, like later that after I got back to it, said, "Hey, maybe Dave would be interested," you know, on a pretext. They would be interested in, you know, some Coleco event or something. And I said, no, let's you know, this. Let's make it happen. Said, no, Dave wouldn't be interested in that. But let's, let's you and me uh, go out, you know, and, uh, you know, never, never dated anyone else. And, oh. 
And here, okay, look, if we're if we're going, tell you what, if we're gonna go heartwarming, uh, yes, sir. You know, my my, we soon after that we we did the week of Letterman shows, either in L.A. I don't know if we were out there for. Uh, I think we did the week of shows, or maybe it was we were out there for the Emmys. I think it was the week of shows. And so, it, yes, that's what it would have been because a bumper, you've talked about the bumpers that uh, Ed Hall and Mark Carson and, Absolutely. And, and all would do. And so she she made the trip with me for part of it. And uh, oh. this, looking at the Hollywood Wax Museum, that's my wife and I, you yep. know, they, they just shot it, you know, while we were shooting those things. And the neat thing is this was my sister uh had already who who was going to nearby Yale at the time had already met Suzanne my folks hadn't yet my sister was watching these shows with my folks back in in Texas <laughs> and she said that's it said that's Suzanne <laughs> that's her and 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 that so that was that was my my first my parents first look at my wife <laughs> on a bumper her, um, uh at, at the letterman show that's right. beautiful so you know yeah we that's uh, just you, so unique <laughs> got got married uh, uh, a year after that with with uh uh many many in attendance and i'll i'll, I'll risk one more yeah. sentimental story yes uh, sir that i do want to tell that um a couple of years after that um when uh, when my wife got pregnant uh with our older daughter uh you know, and just in the office, yeah, what? Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, I tell Dave, uh, Suzanne's going to have a baby. And uh, Dave Dave said, uh, uh, you know, Dave, congratulate me and all. And and I, I went ahead and said to him, uh, well, look, working, I'm going to get choked up. He said, uh, working here, I said, makes it possible to raise a kid decently. So you should certainly feel like you're a part of this. And he said, thank you. And that's all I said. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later at, uh, later at rehearsal, uh, uh, he just, he privately said to me, I appreciated what you said before. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, he called me into his office to say, how'd you think that went with the talking dog, <laughs> with the, uh, <laughs> the cello related statuettes. <laughs> and uh, uh <laughs> And uh, with with uh, and uh, my last show, uh, I went into his office, and about all I could get out uh, was uh, was uh, I owe you a lot, and uh, uh, and he was it was just very nice and and uh, and uh, very warm, you know, and just uh, said, you know, I think I think I wasn't a, a thorn in his side. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all that we could hope to be. Is not I, I think I was inside. I, I tried to not be a pain, so, uh, uh, but uh, maybe I've been a thorn in your side long enough. And okay, one more, and just okay, let's break the tension here. When he uh, not even close, my friend. When, um, when by the said, way, the Toy yeah. Fair remote aired on March fourteenth, eighty four. Do you have a copy of that? No, no, and and my wife never got on camera. So Conan met his wife doing a remote. She was at an ad agency, and that's pretty funny to see. Because there she is in the background, smiling. <laughs> and, um, uh, but yes, John I just did, also I did, gave I did, this, uh, this picture here, so it's my turn to do this now. Uh, we got a nice picture of uh, some fox. Oh yeah, when, there. When, when 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 uh, Dave did Norm McDonald's. Yes. Uh, yeah, we didn't so, get to Norm. Yeah, that oh, was yeah, that so was just a few years. Yeah, Norm McDonald has a show. That was just a joy to do, because um, yeah, look at that. There we are. That was a joy to do. Three because, titans of comedy, my friends. Well, right I don't there. know. It, it, it was so fun. To, well, because the work, it, it, it didn't pay. And it, and I, I kind of thought, is this really going to make much of a dent in the entertainment landscape? I don't know. But I was so happy to do it because I, I just, all day, I sat next to Steve and did a lot of what we're doing here today. A, a, a lot of remembering. Yep. Stuff, you know, to, to maybe a tiresome extent if, if you weren't in on the, the, the bit. But that, and Norm on the other side, and... and uh, yeah, I worked with Norm on, on the Norm McDonald Sports Show and on three things on this uh, pilot that didn't go, Norm McDonald is trending and on Norm McDonald has a show. And I just, I loved that guy. He was such a good hearted guy yeah. and such a unique uh, 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 persona. 
you wrote something funny for him and you realize, okay, that's, that's as good as that can be delivered. It's fun. I, I would write a, a rap, you know, intros into bits where for Norm, something like, you know, one of the reasons I'm so successful <laughs> is because I'm never satisfied. And it was just very much like, okay, shades, shades of Dave. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who We'd write intros for him. Like, you know, we did a bit on the, we did a bit on the show recently that got so little negative response. We thought we'd try it again. And you just, you just, you give him something good to broadcast and you know, he was right in it. And if I can just share a regret, Norm always kept uh, his condition private. Yes. You know, it, it, it just seemed another of his quirks yeah. that, oh, Norm's not feeling so good today. And I thought, all right, I guess maybe he's not taking the best care of himself, but I, I, I did not know what he was facing. Yeah. And uh, um, we, we had been kicking around the idea of uh doing like an old-fashioned radio show very like what i said with letterman and this is another not only a great broadcaster yeah and and uh um you know but also someone with a persona somebody who who uh uh could you could write a show about how oh, he's got gambling debts yeah and he's trying trying to pay it off by doing a remake of one of his movies that flopped <laughs> yeah and fans of Jack Benny will know he'd done a movie like that called uh, The Horn Blows at Midnight. And it was just a running gag for 25 years, you know, <clears throat> for Jack Benny. In this Benny. world of podcasts, by the way, that would have played, I think. I think we I, I, I think we could have made something that a few people would have really enjoyed that would not have gotten a mass audience and would not have made any money. Right. So I, I, yeah. I was also telling myself. You know, uh, slow, slow down there. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of work for, but I, I, I was most of the way through a whole script where he owes Joe Rogan money. And he's terrified. Joe's yeah. going to beat him up, and he's in a restaurant with in a loveless relationship with his girlfriend Jennifer <laughs> Tilly. And I just and and well, things that had happened in real life because I had mistakenly uh, uh, thought Joe, I thought Norm was in the movie Joe Dirt. No, he was in the movie Dirty Work. Dirty Work, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'd gotten it wrong. Oh, and that yeah. was the kind of thing that just just uh, delighted Norm no end. That that I'd worked for him for years and had got, got, the... wrong, got wrong the name of the the flop movie he was in. So I I would have been very happy to do that. Maybe could have. Uh, yeah. So that you know. Uh, anyway, uh, sad these guys are, are, are no longer with us. But did you but, watch Norm's last Netflix special? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I, and I, what a beautiful presentation! And then getting uh, the five in there afterwards yeah. uh, to talk about it. I, I thought that was a master stroke, um, and and, and, what, and I just a, appreciated so much. I appreciate. I I, I am sad that it's happened uh, posthumously, but but the fact that he's getting so much more regard now. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for that, but well, those of us who saw that when he was still here, like I watched him, he came to my oh, he's Canadian, right? He, he would, he would do the, the Canadian small town comedy okay, circuit. Look, so I, I saw Norm in our community theater. Here, in, the, in the everything remind gives me a fond memory department. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, Norm was in the great position of when he died, a comedy legend, you could shove out there, um, his, his, uh, hilarious three minute appearances on Conan. Oh Yeah. You know oh, that are about as fun as something could be, and I was it like it, one of those real early Emmys. Um, uh, the uh, they were like saluting Hanna Barbera, for example. <laughs> yeah, and and um, the, you know, and their stuff. We were fond of it, but you know, they're showing quick drama, draw. They're showing, you know, it's it's aimed at kids. Yep. It's, yep. It's just not. It's not The Simpsons in terms of you know, animation beloved by adults. Okay. Yes. And, and here I'm gonna. The way we were uh, unkind to Joan Collins, I remember uh, when, <laughs> while I was on the show, Danny Kay. Yes. And and uh, I remember uh, everybody, you know, and everybody was going, oh, well, he, he, you know, he spoke the universal language, the language. What a comic genius. Danny Kay yeah. made people around the world laugh as a UNICEF ambassador, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm in Kevin, Kevin Curran's. Uh, uh, brief uh epitaph for danny k was uh, he was a capering boob <laughs> <laughs> and, 
that you know that's just that's Kevin and also I, I mean that that uh, that tickled Letterman no end Kevin can really it, well he can make everyone gasp with laughter that someone could say something that funny when when we took the show to Miami the the airplane show yeah uh, he went I wasn't there but apparently he went out Dave went out on a chartered boat for a little three hour tour uh, <laughs> among the people on the boat was uh, Kevin and. Uh, uh, the, the the guide said, like, keep your eye out. We uh, we may see some flying fish. And Kevin just instantly said, how naive do you think we are? <laughs> <laughs> and I heard that tickle, Dave, and I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm sure it did. But uh, well, anyway, just uh, uh, finishing. Yeah, with um, with my wife, you know, yes. we, we got married a couple of years after that when uh Got pregnant. Uh, uh, my older daughter Samantha was born while we were still on the show, yep. and uh, brought her around like twice, you know, and, and all that. And um, she and uh, brought her there when she was about ten months old and getting talky, and introduced her to Dave. And he's very sweet with little kids, you know. He's very very genuine about that kind of thing. And yeah. uh, he's he's uh, and uh, I taught her a few tricks, like uh, uh, the one I said, "What a little Scottish children say." And uh, she said, Hootman, which is just this very old fashioned <laughs> thing Scotsmen say, Hootman, you know, yeah. supposedly. And, uh, you know, Norm would have loved that, I think, by the way. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, then, and, and, you know, Norm met, met my met my kids and it just, and my parents and just very, you know, they're, they're yeah. these, these are very sweet guys. And then you're, 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 no, Conan's the one I, neither, neither is welcome to marry my sister or, or, uh, or even romancer, but but um, <laughs> Conan, yeah, Conan O'Brien's the top of Conan, that. Conan, right? if things go awry with with yeah. uh, your dear with wife, Liza, Liza, uh, yeah, then, yeah, then we're by all means. Uh... <laughs> um, Jeff, I can't thank you enough for this. I, I, um, the one thing I know that I throw out there, other than enthusiasm, is is authenticity. I just kind of throw my heart out there when it comes mm -hmm. to this. The, the 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 affection I have for all of this is genuine, and I I, I can't. I can't be anything but that. Um, you must know how much of a kick I'm I've gotten out of this today. You must know that, right? Like, we're, you know, something. Uh, I, I think I think the jury's come back. We both enjoyed this. <laughs> Good. Um, a little doubt about that. Well, I, I know I, I would enjoy it because you you just bring such energy and positive yeah. enthusiasm to it. I, I as soon as I heard uh, heard these, I thought, oh, okay, this. This is going to be fun. We're, we're going to get in the weeds. and Yeah. You know, um, I, I'm going to ask one last question about Suzanne before we, before we finish, because, sure. okay, you meet her. She's a, an executive at a toy company or, a, a, you know. Um, Just working in public relations. Yeah. Okay. Public relations for a toy company. She then gets into the TV business and has had a really awesome career. Oh, yeah. Creator of Hot in Cleveland and, and these other things as well. Uh, did she, did, she, did she kind of get into the pleasure. entertainment business because you guys got married? She, she, I got it. Yes. I, I, uh, I, uh, a show I uh, created, uh, Drew Carey's, that Drew Carey was on, what we called The Good Life, that I, yep. a show I created after um, uh, the, the Simpsons. And I, I got, uh, 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 I hired her. And it was, it was, you know, obvious naked nepotism. Sure. But every, you know, uh, uh, she, <laughs> she took the ball and, and totally ran with it. And, uh, you know, certainly, you know, left left me in the dust eventually. I, I, that's She's what I say too. I, I'm, I'm I'm happily uh, more or less retired. I'd say you know, uh, kept. A I've written like uh, four Simpsons episodes in in the last uh, half dozen years. So I yeah. keep my hand in just a little with that. I was keeping it in just a little with the norm stuff. But I'm I'm you know happy to like I said, both my daughters are <laughs> writing for TV. So uh, I'm. I'm I'm, I'm um, this is amazing. If people want to follow to you or find you, do you have a presence on social media? No, no. I, I, oh, I guess I'm on uh, tw Twitter and in Facebook, but I never uh, tweet or face. But, <laughs> okay. Well, but, um, well, I've enjoyed this. Let me say the the the, the <clears throat> best uh, best thing I ever heard was when Steve O'Donnell asked if I wanted to come work on Letterman, and. Second best was when you asked me to to do the Letterman pop. Oh my right. man! And third best was when my <laughs> wife said, uh, "Yes, I will marry you," because I, you know, that I I I was pretty sure she was going to say yes. <laughs> I had a cool job, so that 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 that, that, that knocks that one down a little, you know. I. Uh...
I can't thank you enough. Like, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming on here. And I can't wait for the next one, whatever that looks like. Um, and thank you again. I said it off camera, but I'm going to say it on camera here because, you know, we, 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 you, you started the sentimental stuff a little bit. And so I'm going to continue it um, again. I wouldn't be who I am. My brain was created with these crazy little pathways because of you guys. And, and uh, I, I can't, uh, you know, there are a great number of people in my life who appreciate who I am. And again, the, the, that makeup um, that I have is because of you guys. I, so many hours spent uh, happily, happily watching. Don did a good job talking about that sentiment as well. You know, he wants to, th to give back and say, thank you. That's what this show is. Thank you very, very much for your contribution to the hours and hours and hours and hours and days worth of entertainment. Uh, most of which was incredibly funny. Thank you so much, Jeff, for everything that you have done. You're so welcome. Simpsons fans as well on behalf of the, you know, Simpsons fans as well. Thank you for your contribution there as well. All right. Well, Paul Schaefer would say, you know, don't treat me like a star. You people, you're the stars. You, <laughs> you're the stars. I'm going to do a real quick outro and then we'll say our goodbye privately if that's okay with you. But I, I think we'll meet again. I absolutely will. Um, holy cow. Uh, uh, I hate saying what my favorite episodes are. Uh, I've been asked that quite a few times, uh, which ones have been my favorite. And it's it's not easy to choose that. Uh, this one here, our longest episode, which we're going to break up into two or three parts probably. But um, Jeff Martin, I, I said it at the beginning in the intro. Uh, here's a guy who vicariously, I have a lot of uh, massive, massive, massive affection for, for the projects that he has been a part of. I think that we have certainly proven that point uh, within this episode here. Uh, we didn't get to, to Rupert, so let's talk about that. There's one sponsor of the Letterman Podcast, one sponsor only. It is the Hello Deli, uh, nestled within the womb of the Ed Sullivan Theater. Uh, the Hello Deli's been around. Uh, Rupert, uh, I think by the time this episode airs, Rupert's episode will be out, actually. So, uh, But if you like Late Show with David Letterman merchandise, there's only one official place to get it. And that's at the Hello Deli. Go to hello-deli.com. Rupert packs the orders himself. If you ask him really nicely, he might even add onions to it for you. Your t-shirt, your mug, whatever it is that you're ordering. Um, we're going to end this right now. Uh, this has been an incredible experience having Jeff on here. Um, this has been the Letterman Podcast with Mike Chisholm. Coincidentally, my name is Mike Chisholm. Thank you and good night. Overcoat and underpants.